Ethan Tusker says, or Tusker says, um, what do you believe is the standard of modesty biblically? Um, that's a tough one. Cause I think, I, th I think the way I'd answer it, it might not feel helpful. Ethan, um, is that the standard is modesty. <laughs> so I think the standard of modesty is to be modest. And, um, some examples of this is, is, is motive related that, that, men and women, and this applies more nowadays to men than before, because men are nowadays more into grooming and appearances than they have been historically in the past as mu as much. Okay. I, I, these things probably go in waves, right? You go into certain, certain areas, usually the wealthier areas and the more, where they have more money, people tend to be more obsessed with this kind of stuff. Um, but, but for men and women, it, it, it's there and it's present in our current culture. It seems pretty, pretty strongly. Um, Motives should not be to competitively look better than others. That's a, that, that's an immodest and a bad motive to competitively look better than others. Another, and this is girls, girls, you know, you know, <laughs> um, and another, uh, bad motive would be in order to draw sexual attention, to draw sexual desire out of others by the way you look. If, if, if what you're doing is intended to draw sexual desire out of others by the way you look that's immoral by nature. Just the very intention there is immoral. And th that's what modesty means. Now, modesty is considered like uh, almost a sin in our culture, but that's because our culture flips evil for good. We call evil good and good evil. So we, we've got these flipped. It's a glorious thing when a, an attractive person chooses to dress modestly so as not to, you know, cause issues for others. Now, if you have lust issues towards others, whether they're dressing attractively or not, that's your problem. I'm not putting that on them, but they do have a responsibility before God to live modestly. You have a responsibility to not look and to not engage in things. Um, so everyone's responsible for their own issues here. But, um, but yeah, when it comes to modesty, you, you could be like, yeah, but okay, but how low can a blouse be or, or how tight can somebody's shirt be or how short can their shorts be? And this is where it seems to me there's a lot of gray area. Okay. I, I don't, I don't know how to make a rule for people. It seems like, um, in some cultures, it, it really is different in that culture. And I suppose one example of this would be to look around the culture and be like, are you guys finding that attractive, like sexually attractive when they dress like that? And if the answer is yes, then that's not a culture issue. That's a, that's a sexual immodesty issue. So if I go to a culture and, and the women are not wearing shirts, Am I to tell them, uh, we're, hey, guys, women, all women have to wear shirts? I guess what I want to ask is, is, is maybe contrary to all my expectations, are the men in that culture oogling after the naked torsos of the women? And if the answer is yes, then I go, ah, this confirms to me it's not a culture issue. This is just immodesty is part of the culture in a way that's ungodly and should be changed. Right? The short shorts, or I go to the, I'm in California, I go to the beach and, and there's like, you know, inappropriately dressed human beings. <laughs> and, and how do I know? Because talk to how many people struggle when they go to the beach with the way people look there. Okay. This is obviously our swim wear culture is ungodly in its very nature because it stumbles people constantly. There's, there's plenty of you Christians would avoid going to those environments because it's such a stumbling thing to you that you don't want to fall into that. So you just avoid it. So yeah. Um, modesty, um, difficult to identify exactly in some areas, but those are some of the things that I would use to try to help figure it out. Um, motives, intentions, and impact all matter in relation to modesty. And the rule is not as a Christian, how little can I get away with wearing? How seductively can I dress and it's okay? Because the rule is not don't be seductive, but the rule is be modest. So it seems to me that the requirements of modesty are actually a little higher. Um, and I wouldn't say, uh, they say modest is hottest. I don't know what, what does that mean? You'll be more sexually attractive if you're modest. Again, we're tapping into the wrong motives here. The purpose is not to do that. It's to dress modest, actually modestly, where you realize that your sexual attractiveness is not the purpose of your outward appearance, uh, but honoring Christ is. Anyway, I hope that those are some th thoughtful and helpful things. If anyone wants to push back and think, well, Mike, you're just being, uh, you're being a chauvinist or Mike, you're being, um, you're being a legalist. If you're going to accuse me of being a legalist, I challenge you to prove it. Please. Because if you just accuse me of being a legalist, then I'm going to say all you're doing 
is just randomly accusing people of legalism when they're just trying to seek holiness and you're just being a punk. <laughs> so I could say that because because uh, you can't punch me in the face directly at the moment. But um, but yeah, no, I, I think that modesty is a is a lost virtue in our culture and Christians have to have it in their own culture and they can't look to the culture around them to tell them what it is. We've got to actually see it as a virtue. So that's 20 questions, you guys. Thank you so much for joining. And I will be with you on Monday with Jay Warner Wallace, the cold case detective, um, who's going to be talking about his new book and uh, some of his testimony and things like that and about the uniqueness of Jesus. And uh, really, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be cool to talk about. Otherwise, I won't see you guys till next year. So... Um, Yes, I'm still working, by the way, and I, I keep trying to announce this because people keep asking. I'm still working on the women in ministry study. I'm plowing through it. I'm, it's just a lot of work and it's slow going because I'm doing a lot of research on it. And I don't expect it to be out anytime soon. After it's done, though, once I have it done, I'll present it all as thoughtfully and carefully as possible. And then I'm going to have a, a, a brief break there. And then I will start on the book of Hebrews the book of Hebrews. There's going to be verse by verse going through the book of Hebrews on my channel. I'm not done verse by verse teaching just on a pause while I do this project. So God bless you guys. Keep your eyes on Jesus and um, take every thought captive to his obedience.